Hey, welcome back to our Celebrate Recovery videos where we've been talking about shame and we've been using Dr. Kurt Thompson's book, The Soul of Shame, a little bit of anatomy of the soul as well, which we'll put in the uh, information along with these videos because we highly encourage you to read these. Um, this time, even though neither one of us uh, are, are biologists, we wanted to talk about the fascinating way that, um, that medical science has helped back up some of what we're talking about. Um, so for example, um, back in the 90s when or actually even before then back when I was in in science you know they would say don't you know your your brain has a specific number of cells and it's rigid and by the time you reach this certain age your brain doesn't change after that right um but that's not the case right Scott that's right yeah one word that I've learned is neuroplasticity again neither of us are claiming to be experts here we are just passing on what we're reading about in kurt thompson's books and other books but we do know that the brain is capable of creating new neural networks so new pathways in the brain meaning i can i'm thinking this way but it is possible for me for example to read ultimate truth in the scripture that god says about me um, and before I might say, God couldn't love me for what I've done or for who I am. God couldn't love me for who I am. And yet if I read the scriptures and I read, wow, God as a follower of Christ views me as a child of God, I can create a new neural network or pathway where I am now believing something different and therefore I'm living in a different way, acting in a different way from a neural biological sense that's a new neural network that's been created in my brain and that's amazing that's how god mm -hmm. has created us and there's even what's called you know science has started to talk about uh what's what's called muscle memory and how even the pathways in our brain uh you know if we're creating new pathways that means we can create new muscle memory so, so it's not only a brain issue, but it's, it's literally a full body issue. And of course, we know that when, when people are um, addicted to, to certain substances, you know, that isn't just a brain thing, that's a, a body thing. And, um, and so the neuroscience of shame is the same way, right? It, it literally can be seen um, in, in the way our brain works. And the last time when we talked about being in community and hearing story, that has the impact to, to change your neural pathways as well, right? Yeah. So imagine, imagine that you're at, again, either a Celebrate Recovery meeting, uh, a Gamblers Anonymous meeting, an AA meeting, whatever kind of recovery meeting, you're grief share, divorce care, you're in a counselor's office you're with a friend and you retell your story to a safe person. And as you're telling that, as you're telling that story to your friend and you realize, wow, that friend is sitting there compassionately listening to my story and they're not getting up and walking away because of mm -hmm. what I'm saying. They're not condoning necessarily what I've done. They're not, they're not agreeing that I should have done whatever thing I did that I regret, but they're not getting up and walking away either. They, in effect, are representing what God has done for us in forgiving us. And so their act of love and compassion, that Christ-like act of love and compassion is helping me better picture the father's love and so doing it's creating a new neural network that says if they're not getting up and walking away maybe what i was believing about myself is not true and therefore maybe what god believes about me is not true either it's a, a fundamental uh, disentangling the actions from the person right you're you're accepting the person because i mean jesus 
was mostly associated right with drunkards and sinners and that's how that and that's that's the reason because he was able to love the person he's able to to say that that you know you're in the family of god but the decisions that's that's a different topic right um and i i've also remember dr thompson talking about the fact that you know telling your story is one thing but also starting to hear and actively listen to other people's stories does have formative change in your brain too you're able to practice things like compassion you're able to practice things like acceptance for others you're able to empathize you're able to relate you're i mean fundamentally you're able to say oh i'm not alone in my own story right we're each going through these different struggles so as you're listening to this you might think i've never maybe you've never been involved in what we often call a group or a small group and just the thought of sitting in a group and talking about some things that you really fear people knowing about you is absolutely frightening mm -hmm. i just want to say at least in the context that nathan and i uh, work with one in particular celebrate recovery we both participate on monday nights here at christ community church in Celebrate Recovery, we'd love to have you come join us, spend some time. Um, but I just want you to know you can come and feel safe. There is no expectation that you would come to, for example, a Celebrate Recovery meeting and all of a sudden be asked to share everything about you. And as Nathan was just saying, perhaps the best path forward is just to come and listen, mm -hmm. listen to others and allow literally in this conversation your neurobiology begin to be reshaped as you hear people saying hey i'm a grateful believer in jesus christ and this is what i struggle with that in and of itself hearing that is powerful and that can begin to shape and change the way we think it's a great mm -hmm. place to start right I, I was even reading a quote the other, um, I can't remember, it might've been last week. And they said, be careful when you start uh, hanging around people who have transformed their lives, you'll, you'll start to believe it for yourself too. Mm, um, but it, but it was, it, it's a funny quote because the same, be careful, but, but at the same time, so wonderful because you start to hear a different ending to the story um, than the one that you might be telling yourself. And, and you can start to accept that, that that could be a normal story, meaning, hey, I am becoming um, more connected with God. I'm more abiding uh, today than I ever have before. And I'm slowly seeing uh, the journey toward a, a victory. Um, so you are correct. We definitely welcome any and everyone to the table. Um, not to immediately share your story, but to sit side by side with us because, because we are there every week. Well, you know, for the most part. <laughs> yep. Monday nights at seven. We'd love to have you. Yeah. Well, with that said, our goal has been to just expose you to these two works. If you've never heard them, we've both been impacted by Kurt Thompson and his book, the soul of shame, as well as the anatomy of the soul. We hope that you'll pick them up. And I think you'll be glad that you did. I really would love to meet you if you're not already involved. Um, or if you're hearing this and you don't live in the Westchester area, I promise you there are churches and recovery groups and safe people in your area. And if you have trouble finding one, I'd be happy to help you find one. So thanks for listening in. And thanks, look forward to our next uh, review coming up soon. Bye. Bye-bye.